Professor Quentin Parker is the director of the Laboratory for Space Research at the University of Hong Kong. Well, I think it's fairly significant. It's the first completed flight and recovery of this, uh, this particular um, rocket from CAS Space. Uh, which is a commercial offshoot from the Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's, it's sort of a commercial company now that they've spun out. And it was also, I think, the first time they've had a successful landing under parachute system. And it landed pretty much where it took off. So they recovered the capsule, the rocket, completely fine. And therefore, all the experiments and materials inside were able to be recovered. So that's uh, quite a few firsts in that sense. Um, and I think it bodes well for, uh, you know, the competition. I mean, the rocket's a bit like Jeff Bezos' uh, uh, equivalent um, in the States, and it's intended, I think, for, uh, you know, suborbital flights and used for tourism as well in the future. Chinese tourists, perhaps. <laughs> I mean, that was the obvious question. It's like, when are we going to see space tourism really, literally taking off? <laughs> Yes, taking off and then coming back down again. I mean, the <laughs> Jeff Bezos' is equivalent, you know, you have about a um, 10-minute flight up and down and you take off and land in the same place effectively and you have a, a couple of minutes of uh, microgravity where you, you kind of weightless, feel weightless if you're a, a sort of a semi-astronaut when you go up in these things. Uh, they're about a million dollars US for the American version. I think the Chinese equivalent here is going to be much cheaper than that. And, you know, this flight actually spent five minutes uh, around the Kármán line, you know, so skipping on the edge of, the, of you know, being in orbit. You know, suborbital, so you're not, you're not in orbit, uh, but you're uh, in microgravity. So talk to me, to get technical for a moment, uh, a suborbit uh, test uh, as opposed to an orbital mission. From a technological perspective, what is the difference? Well, you, it's very different. You don't need the same... Um, amount of thrust and fuel to get to the to get into an orbit where you're falling around the Earth's orbit. And you have to travel at a certain escape velocity or just below escape velocity to actually go into uh, an orbit around the uh, around the Earth. And so you're only going up and skipping uh, the upper atmosphere out into almost in outer space and coming back down again. So you don't need the the same level of high technology, the same speed. Uh, and the same amount of fuel and everything else is much lower requirements so it's much easier in that sense to do these flights. Uh, the, what is important is the technology to be able to have the telemetry and the control to go up and then come down and land back down again where you took off and that's because you don't actually go into orbit, you're going up into suborbital environment and then returning and the, and the flights are very short. You know, you're not going up there and orbiting the Earth for days or weeks or months you're just going up there for a few minutes.